we'll do a little bit of commentary and I'll go through the film and I'll pause it and tell you a little bit about what was going on there and uh, let's just get started. So the cool thing about that ceiling is it's not real. We, uh, we didn't have a ceiling that's entirely digital effects or VFX. Spencer Housen, our, our director of photography, is a very experienced visual effects artist. Hello? I just love the color in this film. Uh, fantastic work by our Please colorist say, Dylan Hageman and some okay, really, really great lenses. We shot this film on Cook hey, S4i Get out. prime lenses. Incredible Jesus. lenses. Oh my god! Ah! Oh my god. Ah! Okay. okay. Oh. I just look at my shoulder. This was oh, not a comfortable no. position oh, like for Pierce to be in. Or I'm so sorry. Don't. I'm so sorry. But he was just a trooper. He would no he would back. give it a hundred and thirty percent no matter what right what was asked of him. Forget. And he'd always let me know when when anything wasn't right. Nine one one, what's your emergency? Yeah, um, uh, it's hard to express just shoulder. how much of this film is tooled in visual effects. I'll probably Why stop the film in certain spots to show what you exactly what I mean. There's a lot going on here. Sometimes we have objects removed, like the mic pack, uh, getting painted out frame by frame. This shot is actually two entirely different takes. A take from Alyssa that might have been take three, which might have been her best performance, and Pierce's best performance might have been take five and then later go in and merge those shots together to make one seamless shot so that we could get the best performances from either side so that we didn't have to say, shoot, do we take Pierce's best performance or do we take Alyssa's best performance? One of Spencer's She's favorite directors is David Fincher and this is a technique that he uses all the time. Also little things like removing the camera and reflections yeah, off of the out. stall or off of the Put paper dispenser. Stop! Oh, stop! Putting the phone background uh, when it says no caller call ID when 911's calling. Are you kidding me? Things like that. I'm really, really not supposed to be here. In the girl's bathroom, imagine that. At prom. Here we go, the phone's ringing. Who is it? Oh, it's 911, don't do it. I'm sorry. We sorry. definitely had to buy a phone for this because we had two, two uh, burner phones, if you call it that, because we knew we'd definitely break them. What's your name? Do you even go here? Your mascara is running. So my boyfriend making out with someone. Sorry. So, how many beers did it take to get you into the girls' bathroom? I don't drink. I have seizures. The tongue was just probably the worst experience for Pierce. It's obviously it's a prosthetic tongue. There's some visual effects going on in there to make it look like it's you know fully it's in his life. mouth, but the poor kid had to hold that in there, I take after take. Right. And that's when he just said, I don't think I can do <laughs> too many more of these because this is rough. You can't tell anyone. You 
can't tell anyone. We were so certain that we'd have to cut the tongue shot out and that people just wouldn't buy it, but <laughs> people, people seem to not really notice, which is pretty crazy. Well, why don't you just hang here for a bit? Hey, no, no, no. We had to wait, take wait, Pierce wait, and Alyssa into the wait, studio. No, stop, for, I'm going to stop it right here for for some of these shots um, to get the you know the ambience would change on certain lines based on where they were standing. So we had to go and re-record some of these lines. This is a shot that is particularly interesting to me because, uh, as I said, what's really beyond those walls is a garage. We're in a garage, so that room through that doorway is digitally created, it's not really there, and it's modeled off of the real hallway we shot in, which was at uh, my old high school. And uh, so Spencer built that. To his left is a sink and paper dispenser, that's not really there. Uh, Spencer created those, put those models on there. Really just amazing visual effects work. The helmet on, he's walking through the hall. What's he gonna find? The letters on the wall behind him say, under the lights, we could call it the theme of the prom, something to that effect. The rain was a really, really interesting experience because when I first wrote the script, rain was a part of it. I eventually went to Spencer and said, I'm, I'm gonna write this out. You know, we're trying to do this on a tight budget. I need to be honest with myself about what is inside my toolbox. And Spencer kept reading the script and, and he eventually came back to me and said, no, I think we can do rain. I think we can do rain. I think we can pull this off. So I'll talk about how we did that a little later, but this shot is digital. Sam? I gotta go, Mom. The original script did not include this flashback sequence. It wasn't a part of it at all. The original script seemed to flow really well and to have pauses in all the right places. Uh, but what starts to happen is, is in the interest of keeping things moving, keeping the momentum up, you start to slim down pauses where they aren't absolutely necessary. We had to keep the energy up. But the fallback of that was we had a movie that seemed to just sort of end. She catches him, they go back into the bathroom, spoiler alert, we'll get there, and uh, they go to prom. You have this really serious moment where he reveals everything and then movie's over. And that felt really, really wrong. So what I realized was he's talking about his mom and there's no point of reference. It seems to just sort of come out of nowhere and when people were reading the script and watching the movie, people legitimately came to me and said, is his mother abusive? He doesn't want to call his mom. He's saying, please don't call my mom, please don't call my mom. His mother's abusive, right? I said, no, oh no, no. So our solution to this is we will shoot a new scene and we'll cover that base and we'll give a little more intensity to this second act. Jennifer Cote was my, my old high school theater teacher. I'm gonna stop here. And uh, she did a great job, I thought, in this. This shot is one of the coolest to me because so much of it isn't really there. Nothing on that wall is actually there. Mirrors are really, really difficult in film because it limits where you can stand with the camera because you don't want the camera to show up in the shot. So Spencer had this really genius idea where he said, what if we put a camera in the wall? with a fisheye lens so that the camera captures the reverse of what the mirror would see, so to speak. That image gets put in the mirror so that we can stand anywhere we want. I just love this shot because it's pretty amazing to think about how many hours went into just this couple of seconds. Sam, will you tell me where you're going? So hopefully after making that scene, mom doesn't seem like she's abusive. We actually got Greg Grunberg Sam. to be the 911 operator, it's which was fantastic. Greg is an amazing epilepsy advocate. He's done so much for epilepsy awareness. So just beyond having this incredible actor in our Sam. short film, just having him is such an honor. 
This is another sequence where we used a lot of split shots in order to get the best takes from each actor. This was an amazing performance by both of them, and I knew we had something special right here because the acting coach and I, Rachel Scherer, were sitting behind our monitor watching all of this happen, and we just started bawling. And you've got to remember, I wrote the script, so I've read this thing more than anyone, and I clearly know what's going to happen next, and yet... You know, they made me cry. Pierce did so much to research this and to do it right, working with me uh, on every muscle movement, every twitch, every little emotion uh, that I could possibly convey to him. And I really felt that he mastered it. I really, after we were done practicing, I was watching him and I really felt like, wow, that's, you know, that's me. So I really felt that he mastered it, at least as far as my epilepsy is concerned. I just love Alyssa's performance on this. She did such a good job. I'm so sorry. It's okay. He didn't know. They pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> We've been together for three years and I couldn't take it. I'm sorry. You can't just leave like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you hated me for it. It's kind of awesome, actually. What? It's badass. Who has a breakup story like that? You're gonna have a seizure no matter what at this point, right? Do you want to go? So it's okay. It's okay. But only if you want to. Oh, you don't. You don't have to. Can I borrow your phone? Hey, mom. So let's talk about rain. If you will believe it, a lot of this rain is actually real. The close-ups on the table are real rain. Uh, the shots of the actors, except for the end shot, is all real rain. The phone is real, if you'll believe that. And so the way we did this was we created the most janky rain machine you've ever seen in your life. It was a sump pump that was in a sink pumping water up a hose and up a pole with a garden hose attachment that had a sprinkler setting on it, which we thought matched the cone spray effect of a fire sprinkler. And then the actors stood in a kiddie pool, which had a wider diameter than the reach of the spray so that it kept the theater dry. And then we had towels and visqueen just absolutely everywhere, just in case. And then we would pick up that pool and we'd go dump it outside from time to time it was a lot of work. The prom scene and all of its decorations took about a day and a half just to decorate and just to set up. And that was just for, you know, a couple of shots. So then we'd have a second team of people who would stand in for the actors for the practice shots and all of the blocking so that the actors didn't have to stand under the water and get drenched over and over and over and over again. Pierce was always bragging to us that he had done this shoot where... He did 117 takes in Vancouver in the middle of the night in negative five degree weather. 6.30, okay, first of all. And number two was 15 degree weather. I grew up in negative 39 degree weather. He kept a smile on, but he was getting pretty sick of the rain. This shot is really, really cool, I think. This is really special to me. Spencer put in unbelievable hours on this shot. He had to do all this fluid dynamic testing. He had to make sure that the raindrops would behave exactly the way they should in an environment like this. So he had to make sure that the punch bowl was spilling like it should in real life and that the drops would react to, say, the tablecloth in a physically correct way. The water on the floor is obviously not there, so he had to determine how the helmet would splash. Does it splash outward? Does it splash upward? All those things had to be determined in order to make this shot look right. I dedicated this to my mom and dad who have just been through hell and back. 
looking out for me and caring for me. Raising a kid with epilepsy is no small task. This was a really special project and I'm so glad that you were a part of it. We could not have done this without the enormous support that we got from everyone in this credit sequence. I really do think this will make a difference. People want to see movies and they'll go in excited to be entertained and they'll leave with a new point of reference. For to me, what it's like to have epilepsy is to fantasize sometimes about what you might do to have what everyone else seems to experience every day. For dreams to come true and to lead a fulfilling life, you have to accept that your outcome is not going to be exactly the same as everyone else. That's why I didn't write a Candyland ending because I didn't want the audience to go home feeling like, uh, everything's fine. You know, I want them to go home feeling like there's work to do. We need a little help getting there. And I hope that's what the audience leaves with. It's not that Sam got everything he wanted. It's that with help from someone who cared, he was able to find his own way. Epilepsy is hard. And it's a lot harder when people don't take the time to understand. And, uh, I think that that's the first step. That's the message that I want to send audiences home with, and I really think that if we can start there, we're on the path to ending stigma. So thank you so much for being a part of this and making this possible. It's been an incredible journey, and I owe it all to you. So thank you. Hi, I'm Miles. I directed Under the Lights, and I have epilepsy. I have a dream, and I need your help. Epilepsy affects one in 26 people, and people are really afraid to talk about epilepsy right now because the stigma is so bad. I meet kids every year who say they've never made a friend before. I believe that a widely accessible movie could do more for epilepsy awareness than any other campaign in history. I've written the Under the Lights full-length feature film. It got a nod from the Academy this year, and all we have to do is find funding for production. So if you believe in what we're doing and you loved the short and you're willing to make a donation by texting under the lights to 44321, you could help us make this dream come true. You can also donate by clicking the link in the description. All donations are tax deductible or you can reach out to me at underthelightsfilm.com. Thank you so much for watching the short and for believing in what we're doing and I hope to see you at the premiere for the feature. Thanks.